Thanks for checking out this Game of Thrones review video. This is for Season 8, Episode 6. Uh, right off the bat, I do have to apologize for the way my voice is sounding. I'm getting over a bad cold at the moment. I've literally been laid up for days. Um, <clears throat> so sorry, it's a little bit rough. I have some water over here I may have to take a drink of here and there. So, I'm going to give you my rating on this one out of the five stars. Halves in play right up front. This, in my opinion, was the worst episode of maybe the entire series, to be honest. Actually, I think it was, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it was certainly the worst episode of this season. I'm giving it one star out of five. And it's not why some people would think. It's not because things didn't go the way I wanted to. It's because of the pacing of it, the fact that it was extremely padded, the fact that for a season finale, you didn't do that much. And you, dr you really drug that thing out. I mean, this episode was about an hour and 20 minutes, and I think it should have been maybe 45 minutes? Like, the script supports about 45 minutes, in my opinion, from what I saw. Uh, it was just a mess. But I'm going to go through all this. I'm going to give the good and the bad. Obviously, spoilers. Obviously, lots of spoilers, all the spoilers. Hopefully, people have been enjoying these videos because this is the last one for Game of Thrones. If there's another TV series or something out there that people want me to do an episode by episode of that they have interest in, let me know. Maybe I can look into it. All right, so I'm going to go through this sequentially. All right, immediately, we have that whole thing where, like, Tyrion's walking for, like, minutes like he just keeps walking through the wreckage i understand having a scene where Tyrion's getting the impact of just kind of taking everything in but for as long as he was and that's an overall issue with this episode in general where last episode we had all these instances of gratuitous people running away from things gratuitous people staring at each other and gratuitous uh buildings falling down we now in this one had gratuitous people walking. There were so many drawn out long ass scenes of people just walking places and looking around as they walked places, sometimes just staring forward as they walked someplace. It was awful. That sort of filmmaking is inexcusable in my opinion, especially for a season finale of a show this massive, this epic, and like I said, I feel like this was the worst episode they've ever made of the show. How? How are you going to make your season finale? How is the season finale of any show for any season going to be the worst episode in the entire series? That's egregious, in my opinion. So I have a theory. I have an actual theory here. So what I think happened with the writing, because obviously the directing is not really the problem with this so much. The editing is par is partially a problem because they left so much stuff in that should have been left on the cutting room floor, but the acting is obviously not a problem. Directing is not a problem, you know, all that stuff. The CG is not really a problem, except where they were skimping on it. But um, the writing, obviously the writing is the biggest issue with this season, and that's why it was so bad. So the issue here, I think... This, this is a total guess. This is a total guess. I don't have any inside track or anything like that. People knew this show was coming to an end. Obviously, this was season eight, and they had it had been well known. This is it. I think a lot of the writers were probably like, well, do the smart thing. I have to start looking for another job. I'm not going to just finish my time out with the show and then go find another job after that. People want to have job security. So I think they started looking for their jobs. And I think a lot of the really good writers on the staff, like the best ones, got snatched up. And I don't think they were there for the whole thing. So it kind of seemed to me like they were writing the scripts with the skeleton crew, writing staff. That's what it seemed like to me. Did it seem like that? that I don't know, center this a little bit more. Did it seem like that to anyone else? Because that's what it seemed like to me. It's like the not the best writers, the skeleton crew's just pulling this off. Mm, it was bad. So anyway, all that walking with Tyrion. And then what I want to say is, are we to believe now that there's been this massive shift in Grey Worm's attitude just because he lost his love? I understand that connection. I understand him being bitter and everything. But the fact that he turned from someone who was much smarter than that to someone who just like blindly obeys Daenerys, which, you know, he had been obeying her for, for the longest time. But that's when she was a much better person. He had a moral compass. He always did. 
So all of a sudden, he's just like, nope, what she says goes. And he's just like so bitter. He's just like, justice, justice, people must die, everyone must die. Um, and we're just supposed to believe that that's all based off his love being killed. Um, I mean, I guess that can do it to you. Uh, but I, I don't know. It just seemed a little weird. It seemed a little forced to me. That's not even the worst of any of it. <laughs> uh, I wrote down, you know, because I have my notes here, like usual. Uh, really taking their sweet time with every single scene. Every scene was l just ridiculously drawn out. Ridiculously drawn out. To a point where you just started, like, getting bored. Like, before anyone even talked about anything, before anything happened in the scene, they always had these big lead-ups. These long, long, terrible, boring lead-ups to something happening. Whether it's a conversation or something more interesting than that. And it just, when you got to the meat of the scene, you're just like, wait, what? Huh? I wasn't paying attention because it's so freaking boring. So just, just terrible. Um, so the, the scene, the whole thing where Tyrion's crying, we all know when Tyrion was crying because he found Cersei and Jaime dead, we all know that he's only crying for Jaime. And especially because... Um, and this is a good scene for this reason, especially because it's his fault that Jamie's dead because he let Jamie go. If he hadn't let Jamie go, he would still be alive. Simple as that. He took a chance with letting him go. It was, it was a dumb one because it was a real long shot. And I talked about it in that episode when he did it, that did he not know Cersei by that point that nothing was going to change her, that she was never going to back down. Um, so he just made a, a stupid decision and yeah, it was all his fault that Jamie died for that reason because that was a unbelievable long shot. I know he did it because he was like, maybe I can save the people cause I can't rely on Daenerys to not just scorch everyone to hell. Um, but you know, but that's why that, that actually was a good moment of the scene. But once again, everything leading up to that, it showed him walking for far too long to get down to the basement. Like it showed every step pretty much. I'm like, we don't need all this. Just show us the, the important portion of it. This episode being the season finale, especially should have just been like, go, 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 go. Chop the scenes down. Once again, I said this on one of the other ones. It had been over two years or it had been about two years for them to make this season. And they kept being like, well, these episodes, it's only going to be six, but they're going to be longer. And it seems like all they did to make them longer was just put in longer scenes of stuff you don't want to see. That means nothing to the actual show. So you screwed up. You did a terrible job, in my opinion. Awful. Just garbage. But, unlike some people, I'm not going to start a uh, online petition to be like, oh, remake the season. No, because we don't own that property. As people... As a fan, you may think you own the property somehow, but you don't. Whatever is written and whatever you get from HBO is what it is. And you have to accept it. Either, either you just say, hey, I hated it, that sucked, and I'm, I'm mad about it, and I'm going to you know, unsubscribe from HBO or whatever. You can do that. But to go online and be like, oh, we're going to do a petition to, for them to remake it, stupidity. Because first of all, they're not going to do it because that's way too much money, way too much money. So they're not going to do it. The other thing is, if that's the most one of the most important things in your life and you're that attached to the show, you got a problem. You, you need to figure something out with your life because that's an issue. If you care that much about a show, get over it. Move on. Yes, I'm here ranting about this, but as soon as I'm done with this little rant, I'm over it. I'm done. And to be honest, the way this, and I'll get to it, the way they ended the story, like their idea for the actual like ending to it, I'm fine with. I don't care. Like that's fine. And in a lot of ways it made sense. But I think the way they got there and a lot, they didn't build the tracks to take us to that destination. They definitely didn't. So I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, so yes, the scene with Tyrion crying because he finds Jamie dead is a decent scene, minus all the extra portions of it. Um, uh, yep, the, the, the running, I wrote down the comment about people running or walking too much. Um, if you think about it, Daenerys' troops were mainly just comprised, in, at least initially, and actually at the end too, were mainly just comprised of bloodthirsty savages, 
which is what the Dothraki are portrayed as in the show. It's not me saying that. And mercenaries, the Unsullied. So if you think about it, it was kind of, in a way, um, kind of uh, foreshadowed in a sense of what her troops were made up of, how she wouldn't end up being like a great person. Because people who were more like freedom fighters had people just like signing up. The like, we believe in what you're doing. And obviously she got some of that, but the core of how she started and how she ended, it was bloodthirsty savages and mercenaries. Authoritarians, that's the way it is. Tyrants, that's the way it is. And that's obviously what she became. Which I know a lot of people were mad because they're like, I love Daenerys. But hey man, that story. And actually, I thought that portion of the story was good. That's a good thing, how she takes that, makes that change. Because it's kind of realistic. Like, people do that. Especially when you're going for a position, for a, a position of power. So, just saying. Uh, it's clear, it's actually pretty clear pretty quick that she's going to end up ru ruling with an iron fist that part where she's taken uh king's landing and she's talking to everyone and just uh, addressing everyone and everything's so dark everyone's dressed dark it's so bleak looking everything's destroyed it just gives you that kind of post-apocalyptic like uh it reminded me of some of the scenes from uh star wars with like the empire you know like how bleak and sanitized everything looks and just like depressing so I was just like, oh, yep, this is a clear, clear sign. Um, the Okay, so the scene with Tyrion and Jon, when Tyrion's thrown in jail after Daenerys is like, you betrayed me. Um, first of all, we shouldn't have that scene. And the reason we shouldn't really have that scene is Daenerys would not allow that. There is absolutely no way that she would allow someone who she's afraid can overthrow her as the ruler and afraid might turn on her, go and talk to the person who did turn on her and tried to undermine her, and she just threw in jail. And believe me, if when Jon Snow would go to talk to him, one of the guards would say, hey, Daenerys, guess who's talking to who? And that would happen. So this scene makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Because it wouldn't happen, knowing Daenerys. There's no way it would happen. The other thing is, the majority of the scene of what Tyrion and Jon are talking about is really just rehashing a lot of stuff that us audience members have already seen in the show. So you don't even need it. Just cut it down. Once again, you're just stretching things out. Cut it down and let's get the meat of what they need to talk about. And you can do that in a short, effective manner that people are happy with. We don't need the rehash. We watch the show. We all watch the show. You don't need to retell us what we already watched. And that leads me to, there. there's a very basic tenet of being a good writer. And that is you show it instead of saying it. And that a lot of the times goes to whether it's, you know, with a screenplay script or if it's with um, like writing a book. Instead of having characters tell people things like, this is how I'm feeling or this is what's going on. You show them what's going on so the I, I like i just can't like that's terrible writing it's awful writing stop with the rehashing we don't need it it it, it makes it makes you seem like you're being condescending to your audience and that's sucky nobody likes that nobody uh do do, do, do. uh yeah uh, right potential trader um no, 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 Okay, by the time I wrote, by the time we get to John and Daenerys talking at the Iron Throw, at the, at, at the Iron Throw rug, no, at the Iron Throne, um, I didn't really care that much because so much time had passed. Like, there's, you're spending so much time just, like, looking around the room and, like, Daenerys is just walking and looking at things. And then John comes in and they're just kind of looking at each other. And then they start talking and, like, it's kind of like fluff talk. Um, it is a nice moment where he goes in and stabs her. I didn't know that that would happen. And when the stab happened, I was like, maybe she stabbed him. So like, it wasn't telegraphed, which is good because that makes for that kind of like surprise moment. That's good. But everything leading up to it made me less interested because I'm just like, okay, uh, can we move it? Can we do something? What's going on? So, um, 
also in the scene is a situation where idiotically the dragon decides not to kill john after it witnesses him kill daenerys uh based off everything we've seen in the show that dragon would murder him right then right there he would be murdered and i know everyone agrees with that that is ridiculous you might say oh but he was also a targaryen those freaking dragons don't know that they were friendly with him but he just he just killed his mother is what you need to think all loyalties all brief loyalties at that out the window he would have barbecued him straight up so that's idiotic then then we have this really unbelievably stupid moment where the dragon melts the iron throne and why is that stupid because the entire time this entire series these dragons are portrayed as basically feral animals that Daenerys has to be there to get under control and at this moment what the script is saying to you what the writers are saying to you is this moment of this dragon being like you humans you're fighting over this thing this throne let me go ahead and intellectually illustrate to you how it doesn't actually matter as I just take it away I take it out of the equation it was an intellectual action that had an intellectual impact on the story from a feral animal that the action doesn't fit. I was just like, I was totally miffed by it. And it was the quick succession of the fact that he doesn't kill John, which he would have. And then he does this stupid thing with the Iron Throne that's way above his intellect. And I was just like, miss and miss. Like, what are you doing? terrible writing just awful just awful i mean i thought it was totally appropriate and fine where he like picks her up and just flies away and is never seen again like that's fine i like that aspect of it it makes sense that's fine but all the other stuff ugh, just terrible i think i should take a little water i'm getting a little worked up if you can't tell it did kind of enrage me a little bit but like i said when i'm done with this video i'm moving on i'm done because all the seasons prior to eight were awesome. They were really well done. And I'll just remember those and I'll just be like, oh yeah, season eight. No, nah, just forget about it. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, sorry. Oh, the, uh, the meeting of the lords. I mean, that's kind of why I was calling it. Like the heads of all the houses when they were getting together and Grey Worm brought um, Tyrion out. Like that meeting was very slow once again the theme here so slow and it was really weird and awkward the way they were doing it because they were kind of trying to like mix uh seriousness with comedy and it just wasn't working at all like the little comedic bits that they had in there just seemed to extremely clash with the mood that was actually set because it was a very serious situation especially on the you know on the tales of everything that happened that is just kind of ridiculous so um uh, and okay this is yeah okay so so first of all you know as we all know because we're watching this we've already seen this um if you're watching this video you've already seen it uh that when Tyrion comes in they're basically asking like well we want to hear what what your gray worm we want to hear what your prisoner your traitor has to say about who should rule the kingdoms first of all gray worm would never be like okay especially with how cold he's being portrayed in this episode uh he would he wouldn't and he did even talk about like there needs to be justice there's no way he would be like yes pick the brain of this prisoner who's a traitor who killed my queen pick his brain and have him tell you who should be the ruler wouldn't happen it's totally not believable and for all these people to be like this person's in jail this person made a ton of mistakes let's listen to what he has to say makes no sense so that didn't make any sense and then i will tell you when when they were like asking him well who do you think it should be <laughs> and he said when he first said bran i legitimately laughed out loud i was watching by myself and i legitimately laughed out loud at that for two reasons one in the context of the way everything was written and the story, it's absurd. 
And two, just thinking about how mad people would be if that was the case. And then that ended up being the case. <laughs> and, I, and I laughed even more. Because I was just like, oh my gosh, people are going to be so pissed. Uh, and when I looked at it, though, like, from a story perspective, it makes sense. And it's fine. The problem is, like I said before, they didn't lay the tracks to legitimately get there. Bran, as the character that he was, if he would had been given a lot more screen time and development, makes sense to be king because he didn't want it. So he would be doing it not for himself, but for everyone else. He was clearly neutral, and he could see the past, all of the past, and learn from those mistakes that everyone's made, and partially the future. So that makes sense to kind of serve everyone. Plus, he's very even keel. He obviously doesn't get mad or happy or any emotion at this point since he became the Three-Eyed Raven. So he actually makes perfect sense to be the king. The problem is... <laughs> like getting wound up here the problem is like i said you didn't lay the tracks to get there he's barely been in the in the series to be honest and if you were going to take it to that point you needed to have way more screen time for him especially in season eight and <clears throat> and you needed to l develop him more and let people know more about him not just him in the past but who he was as the three-eyed raven give us a little bit more about the three-eyed raven give us more of his feelings on what should have been going on with people and going on with the kingdoms and everything. Instead, he's just like in the periphery the entire time, just like sitting there. And he's like barely in it. So then when you just pull him in and you're just like, who should be king? That guy, guy that's barely in this and people have most likely forgotten about and absolutely no one thought would be the king and nobody wanted to be the king most likely. Although I, would, I said, you know, from a story standpoint, it was fine with me. <clears throat> Most people didn't want it. Like, that's that brand being the king was like the sheer way to piss like almost everyone off because there were a lot of people who wanted John, a lot of people wanted Daenerys. Some people were like, I'd love to see Tyrion up there. Some people were like, How about Sansa? How about Arya? You know, all these things. Nobody said, How about Bran? Oh, I'm sure there was someone out there, but barely anyone said, how about Bran? So they literally <laughs> went with the decision that would piss off the most people. Uh, it's crazy to me. So that's another reason why I was laughing about it. But um, yeah, but they just, that character was so underdeveloped and underused and barely there that you cannot make that person the king. It has no impact when you announce that to people. It has only people being angry, people being disappointed, or people being like, Huh? Just confused about it, to be honest. Plus the fact that the guy who is the actor who plays that character, I've said it before, like, I can't decide if he's a good actor and it's just the way he was directed and the way his character was written because he's kind of, like, emotionless, or he's not a great actor. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. But at any rate, he's an annoying character to watch. Totally annoying. So that makes it even worse for people. So, ugh, that was just bad. Um, I did like the quote. This was a really nice quote about when Bran said about Tyrion being chosen as his hand. Uh, he's made many terrible mistakes. Now he's going to spend his life fixing him, or fixing them. That's a great quote. That's an, a very impactful quote. It's an awesome quote. So that was like a really nice, cool moment amongst all these issues. So like there are little gems that kind of shine in there. I just wanted it cut down to like 45 minutes. I mean, if you're going to disappoint people, don't disappoint people over the span of an hour and 20 minutes. Just, just disappoint them over the span of 30 to 45 minutes. It's more efficient that way. It's, it's a much better idea. Um, uh, yeah, so that quote was actually really awesome. I really did like that. And it, and it makes people think, and it, it's a very good point that, you know, Tyrion, he messed up a lot of things and he did a lot of terrible stuff. So the best thing to do was to force him to work even though he was going to like it force him to work to undo all those problems and i did like that aspect of it and i really did like the fact that Tyrion ended up being the hand again that was cool and i'm sure a lot of other people actually like that aspect of it if they could see past all the other issues um uh the end like the end when it just kept being like <laughs> when i kept thinking oh this is the very end it's now it's over oh no here's another section now it's going to be over Oh, oh no wait there's more and it just kept being like more and more and more so all those little segments once again took forever 
They were way too long. They were way, way, way too long. Especially, like, when Brienne's sitting there. And I really like that scene where Brienne's, like, finishing Jamie's story, which was a really sweet moment. And it was really cool and it was very meaningful. But the fact that they have you watching as she's basically writing every single word. It's like, we're just a documentary crew now and we're just going to sit here and let you watch her write every letter. It took too long. All of these scenes took too long. And like I said, I kept being like, okay, now it's over. Oh, no, wait, here we go again. Now it's over. It was good to get the wrap up of what people were doing, but you don't need it to take that long. Plus, if you would have had some better music to go with it that was a little more emotional for everyone that people could really enjoy, that may have helped the situation too. So make it tighter and make the music a little bit more impactful and better and it would have been those those would have been better moments. So um and then like the meeting at the end, like I I appreciate the the um I appreciate that moment for what they were trying to do where it was like now look at the makeup of the new um I guess uh, advisors, like the the grouping of advisors. Look at the makeup of who Brand's advisors are now. It is a cool moment, like, and you should see that, and you should get a little bit of interaction. But once again, like the interactions went on way too long. It seemed way too long and drawn out, and it made it awkward. It made it weird, and it was just like, what are we waiting for? Like, are we waiting for them to like do something, or or are we just like spectating? Like, I just don't get it. Like, it there wasn't. Besides just showing you who was the makeup of it, which you could have done very quickly and it would have been very effective, I don't understand the point of that scene because it was way, 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 way too long. It, it was very pointless. Um, and then I did like the very, very end portion where John and John Snow and Tormund Giants Bane are going out back into the wild with the wildlings to basically resettle the land that was taken by the White Walkers. So it was a cool moment of kind of this proclamation of the land is being reclaimed. And that was a cool moment. And I did like that that's kind of where it ended, ended. Um, so that was nice. So that's it. So like I said, you know, my overall is, is one star on this, but there were a few good little gems. They just really needed to rework that script, take a lot more passes at it, um, and cut it down a lot. Because making something super, super slow can really kill it. It can really kill it in a bad way. Um, and like I said, the end of this is what it is. Move on. These stop the silly petitions. It's pointless. It's stupid. It makes you seem petty and idiotic if you're doing that. Um, show that you have the emotional adult capacity to let go of a TV show. That's my advice to you. Uh, the other thing is, this, this is a funny thought that I had. George R.R. R. Martin is a genius. He is a genius because he didn't finish his books. So he allowed HBO and the TV show to disappoint everyone and basically test endings and find out via social media and everything what people actually wanted and what people hated and, and super hated. And now he can finish the books. He can now swoop in and be like, I'll save the story. The person who created it, I will save it. Seriously, think about that. Like, he can come off, like, people have been so pissed at him for not finishing these books during the duration of the show. Now, since it's done and he knows exactly what people want, he can swoop in and be these people's saviors. And people will be like, oh my God, George R.R. R. Martin, we love you so much. You're so much better than HBO. And then it can be re reclaimed where people say, Guess what? The books are way better than the show. He's a genius if that's what he was thinking. I don't think that was the case, and I actually don't think he's going to finish the books. But this is your moment, George R.R. R. Martin. Learn from this. Take this and run, buddy. People will love you. You could be a Game of Thrones god. You could. I'm just saying. So anyway, that's basically it. Uh, hopefully people enjoyed these. Hopefully you weren't too worked up by me being worked up on this one. Uh, like I said, overall one star. This was, a, it was terrible, <laughs> but I'm moving on. Like I said, uh, but yeah, if you heard anything that you like, please, please, please do me the favor of hitting that subscribe button. It really does help out. It takes you literally a second. 
it is painless for you less painless than hearing that brand is the king so just hit that for me and actually let's do this for every person who sees this and is not happy with the fact that brand's king hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up we'll find out uh, also you can hit that notification bell and it will let you know anytime i have a new video coming up Hopefully I'll be doing more this past weekend. I was a little light on what I would like to do because I wasn't feeling well and I'm still getting over things. But thank you so much everyone for checking this out and until next time, keep it brutal.